It looks like there's a lot of ingredients here and it might scare you and kind of make you shy away from doing this recipe, but most of the work is really just time on the stove. In terms of you know the essentials of making good sauce, I think you want to layer flavors. We first start with some beef shin and some uh, veal breast. You want to generously season these beautiful hunks of beef. And then we're going to brown the meat. You want to get a good amount of color on the bottom of the meat. And then we're going to dump the sofrito in. And this is all for the sauce, and it's you know the beginning of the layering of the flavors. Nice browning. The sofrito is uh, like 50% red onion, 25% carrot, 25% celery, a couple nice cloves of garlic, pinch of thyme, some basil, some parsley. kind of what you're after, a really nice mince of everything. I'm gonna add a little bit more fat, the sofrito vegetables. You wanna fry these minced vegetables and extract that liquid and concentrate the flavors. You know, the size of everything is minimizing because of the water is coming out of it. So now I'm gonna put the meat kind of back in the sofrito and we're gonna let that cook together. So this is my favorite tool in the kitchen. It's an old-fashioned hand food mill. It basically purees things, processes things. Unlike a blender, it does not whip air into things. This is really the old school way of doing it and it really does make a difference. You know, San Marzano tomatoes are great, but there's a lot of great domestic tomatoes also. I really think it's trial and error, you know. You know, if you don't have a food mill, I would really just use your hands and really massage them and break them up a lot. You could buy a strained tomato product instead of doing it yourself, or a chopped tomato product. Really, it's uh, a lot of different things can work. All right, we'll let that come up to a boil, and then we'll put it down to a simmer. All right, so now we're gonna make the meatballs themselves. I have some really nice veal. It's kind of important to ask your butcher to triple grind the veal. You really want it to be super fine, so one grind isn't enough. You know, you could do any meat you want. I mean, these could easily become lamb and ricotta meatballs, but you know, it's pretty much two to one uh, veal to ricotta cheese, a fair amount of Parmesan, some eggs. We're gonna season these ingredients with Simply uh, salt and pepper and a good amount of fresh grated nutmeg. Salt. We don't use any filler in our meatballs. Breadcrumbs are very common in many meatball recipes, but we just kind of choose to keep it really pure and simple. I'm gonna mix this up with my favorite tool, my hands. You really wanna incorporate everything really well. You wanna make sure there's no kind of lumps of ricotta or big clumps of meat that don't have anything in it. One kind of homogenized pink blob, and that's what you want. This becomes, as you can tell, like incredibly sticky and kind of hard to deal with. You could either wet your hands with a little bit of water, or you could do flour. And we simply form them into a couple ounces. And you really just want to kind of form them gently. And you know, I'm a big fan of not making things perfect because it kind of shows people that you know, it's a handmade product. The last thing you want to do is put this delicate kind of room temperature meatball into hot oil. It'll really just fall apart. So what we do is um, we freeze them overnight and they become very hard, obviously. Now you want to fry your balls. So you know, if I was doing this at home, I'd probably be in a shallow pan and I'd be flipping the meatball to get browning. And you want the oil to get pretty hot. The best test really is to kind of drop it in there to see if that sizzle happens. And if you see that nice hard sizzle, that's kind of a good sign. See that beautiful browning that happens? You know, being that these are frozen, they only brown on the outside. There's very little cooking that happens. The cooking will happen in the oven covered in that beautiful sauce we made. So the last step of the meatball is you just put them in a pot or a pan, however many you have. 
After it's cooked for four hours, you yield this, you know, this beautiful processed sauce. We're grinding our own wheat for flour and our own corn for polenta. This polenta has no fat in it. All the fat is naturally from the corn. Reggiano Parmigiano. Extra virgin olive oil. Fresh parsley. Cooking a big pot of meatballs in, in sauce on a Sunday at home is really an awesome thing to do. It kind of fills your house with unbelievable aromas.